Hello, I'm Dr. Zain Al Safi, reproductive endocrinologist and fertility specialist at UCLA Medical Center. Today, I'll be talking about egg freezing and female fertility preservation. You can join us on Twitter by using the hashtag UCLAMDChat. I will be answering these questions after the presentation. So some background here, as you may know, women have a limited number of eggs or oocytes that decrease throughout their reproductive years until they reach menopause with an average age of 51. The probability of achieving pregnancy in each cycle decreases as they age, primarily because of increasing rates of chromosomal abnormalities in the eggs. Historical data showed that there is a decline in fertility in the populations that uh, do not use contraception, as shown in this figure, which shows um, 10 population-based studies, which shows declining fertility, marital fertility, as women age. So the two factors responsible for this age-related uh, fertility decline, first thing is uh, the number of eggs in the ovaries. So as you know, women have a fixed number of eggs in the ovaries, and this number decreases naturally and progressively. In fact, it is highest during pregnancy, in mid-pregnancy when the female fetus has about six to seven million eggs in the ovaries. This number goes down to about one to two million uh, eggs at birth, and then further decreases to about 300,000 eggs uh, by the time, by the onset of puberty. This is all before uh, menstrual cycles even uh, start. This number keeps decreasing until it reaches about 25,000 eggs by age 40 and about 1,000 by the onset of menopause. So only about 400 eggs will ovulate over years of reproductive life. Also, the age-related decline in fertility is accompanied by significant increase in the rates of chromosomal abnormalities in the eggs and the embryos resulted so this will increase the rates also of spontaneous miscarriage. There are numerous diseases that could impair female fertility either by themselves or as a result of their treatment. Preserving a woman's potential for becoming a genetic mother is now possible. Fertility preservation in essence means that uh, preserving the ability of an individual or couple to start a family at the time of their choosing. So what are the reasons to consider fertility preservation? It could be an immediate threat to fertility because of chemotherapy or pelvic radiation therapy. They could be planning a surgery that may increase the risk of damage to the ovaries. Or it could be an ovarian disease, such as endometriosis when it's involving the ovary and increasing the risk of ovarian damage. It could be an increasing risk of, um, of premature ovarian insufficiency, such as those that are um, carriers for genetic abnormalities like Fragile X syndrome, or a family history of premature ovarian failure of pre or premature menopause. They could also be carriers for genetic mutations requiring removing these ovaries, such as those carrying BRCA mutations that increase the risk of cancer. And finally, it could be delaying pregnancy for personal reasons. In general, commonly these days, the most common indications could, would be um, delaying pregnancy for personal or social reasons, knowing the negative effect of age on fertility, or it could be uh, preserving fertility prior to cancer treatment. Which brings us to the term oncofertility. This is a term coined for fertility preservation in cancer patients. In the United States, more than 100,000 of women, women of reproductive age receive a diagnosis of cancer each year. They are at risk for diminished reproductive potential or infertility as a result of treatment. The degree of ovarian damage from chemotherapy is dependent on the type of the chemotherapeutic agent, the dose given, the age of the patient, and her baseline ovarian reserve. Similarly, damage to the ovary from radiotherapy is dependent on the age of the patient and the dose of the ovarian exposure. 
So the need for fertility preservation has to be weighed against the morbidity and mortality associated with cancer. Improvement in cancer management and increasing survival rates has created a need for oncofertility. Since these treatments may cause infertility in the future, patients are counseled about these possibilities and offered fertility preservation. Informed decision reduces reproductive regret in these young women. So, what is the process of fertility preservation? This can be done these days by either egg or embryo freezing. And both of these would involve initial assessment of the ovarian function. When these patients come in, we will uh, assess their hormones by doing blood tests, and we will perform a pelvic ultrasound to assess their ovaries. Once the decision, decision is made to uh, move forward with uh, egg or embryo freezing, ovarian stimulation is carried out in the same manner that is used with in vitro fertilization, IVF, using injectable hormonal medications. On average, this process takes about 10 days. Following the stimulation comes the egg retrieval or the egg harvesting procedure, where the eggs surrounded by the fluid in the ovarian follicles, and these are the spaces in the ovaries that house the eggs, will be aspirated vaginally while under sedation. And this is done under ultrasound guidance. Following the egg retrieval, they will be examined under the microscope. And those mature eggs will be frozen that day in the case of egg freezing. And in the case of embryo freezing, the eggs will be fertilized that day using partner or donor sperm. And then the fertilization on embryo development will be followed in the next few days, usually until day five to seven of embryo development when good quality embryos will be frozen. So what are the risks associated with this um, procedure, whether egg freezing or embryo freezing? The risks in general are similar to those associated with um, IVF, and they include small risks of ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome, which means hyper um, in, in stimulation of the ovaries related to the hormones, leading to enlargement of the ovaries and fluid accumulation in the pelvis and abdomen, and uh, typically it resolves spontaneously over a few days. Also, it carries an, a small risk of infection and bleeding related to uh, the egg retrieval procedure. In regard to the cryopreservation or the freezing process itself, I wanted to mention a few points uh, that changed over time. Due to the large size of human eggs and high water content, freezing process may result in cell damage because of ice crystal formation. Current freezing techniques use cryoprotectants to reduce the formation of these ice crystals. More recently, vitrification has replaced the slow freeze method as the method of choice for cryopreserving the eggs. Because this method is associated with lower risk of forming ice crystals, and they result in higher rates of cells surviving the freezing process, and higher rates of fertilization, embryo formation, and pregnancy rates. In general, when comparing this process, the vitrification, to the old process, the slow freeze method, it involves uh, exposing the eggs to a higher concentration of the cryoprotectant for a shorter duration, followed by ultra-rapid cooling by direct immersion into liquid nitrogen. Once these eggs and embryos are vitrified, they can be stored indefinitely in liquid nitrogen. And in the future, when a woman is ready to use the frozen eggs uh, to achieve pregnancy, these cryopreserved eggs are placed in warming solution and assessed. Those eggs that survive the freezing process are fertilized using intracytoplasmic sperm injection, or ICSI, where a, a single sperm is injected directly into the egg. So what are the chances of successful future pregnancy? In general, the two most important factors in determining the probability of a live birth um, from eggs that are frozen and used in the future to achieve pregnancy, first is the woman's age at the time of egg freezing, and second, the number of available eggs. 
Clinical pregnancy rates have been estimated uh, anywhere between 4 to 12 percent per egg. But since the egg freezing process is relatively new, more data will be needed um, to have a better idea on success rates. What about those embryos and children uh, resulting uh, from the use of previously frozen eggs? Available data um, comparing those embryos and children born um, with the use of previously frozen eggs, comparing them to those using fresh eggs in IVF, did not show an increased risk of chromosomal abnormalities in the embryos or congenital anomalies in their children. Now, how long can we store these eggs? The eggs can be stored for longer duration, and this does not appear to have negative effects. However, data are only available for up to four years of storage. It must be remembered that older maternal age at the time uh, when carrying a pregnancy is associated with higher pregnancy risks and higher pregnancy complications such as elevated blood pressure in pregnancy, diabetes in pregnancy, and cesarean section. So most clinics have an upper age limit on when these eggs can be used to achieve pregnancy. And in our clinic, it is the age of 50. Before finishing uh, this topic, I wanted to mention a couple of other procedures that are used uh, for female fertility preservation. And these are um, associated with oncofertility or um, preserving fertility in cancer patients. The first one is ovarian tissue cryopreservation. And this is basically freezing ovarian tissue for future use. It's still considered experimental and is performed in certain centers and the research setting. It involves surgical excision of at least half of one ovary immediately before beginning cancer treatment. And then the extracted ovarian tissue can be either frozen, uh, fr frozen for future retransplantation or autotransplantation or it can be processed in the lab in an attempt to, produ to produce mature eggs. And this is a process of in vitro maturation. Although an international registry is needed, many healthy babies have been born worldwide after ovarian tissue freezing and autotransplantation without any increase in the risk of miscarriage or congenital anomalies. In such cases, the life birth rates per transplant was roughly estimated to be around 30%. And this may be the only suitable option for uh, prepubertal girls, although no babies have yet been born to uh, women whose ovarian tissue was frozen before puberty. And although promising, ovarian tissue autotransplantation carries the risk of reintroducing malignant cells in the case of ovarian carcinoma and malignancies uh, that may metastasize to the ovaries. Finally, in vitro maturation, which is an experimental strategy that involves in vitro culture of ovarian tissue, follicles, or immature eggs, hoping at the end to produce mature eggs ready for fertilization. So, to summarize, reproductive age and women's age have a negative effect on future fertility potential, mainly through decrease in the quantity and quality of eggs in the ovaries. There are numerous indications to consider uh, fertility preservation. And in those women uh, of reproductive age that are facing procedures that may uh, decrease their future uh, reproductive capability, may consider egg or embryo freezing. And finally, egg freezing is now a widely used method for uh, female fertility preservation with increasing success rates. Thank you for your attention. And uh, now I'll be answering questions that you tweeted earlier. Thank you. So the first question is, what would be the best age to consider egg freezing? This is a very uh, common and important question. And unfortunately, the, the answer is not as straightforward. But uh, in general, there is no ideal age to consider uh, egg freezing. But it would be probably... Uh, early to mid-30s, uh, where after which the natural uh, fertility will decline. So uh, 
this will uh, create a better chance for uh, future fertility. If the woman would freeze eggs prior to this time, they would actually have a great response and have a good number of eggs frozen, but they may not use their eggs. So I think a conversation um, between a woman and her physician would make the decision e easier. Second question, how long does the process of egg freezing take? So once the decision is made to move forward with the process, uh, ovarian stimulation takes about 10 days and followed by the egg retrieval. So it takes about um, an average of two weeks. Another question here. How soon can the egg freezing process start before cancer treatment? This is very important. In general, uh, the short answer is that egg freezing or stimulation, ovarian stimulation, can start at any time in the menstrual cycle, and um, that will allow for prompt uh, cancer treatment. Because in these situations, uh, we don't really need to uh, synchronize the egg development and embryo development with the uterine in, uh, lining. So it can be started at any time after assessing the hormones. Thank you so much.